Welcome to a very special um, show of the Terminus Tavern tonight, a show designed to build community around Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, currently in development by Visionary Realms. I am joined by Ben and I, Tech Ninja, and Theric tonight. Uh, we're in our uh, campfire, uh, we're hoping to hear some good stories, get some good conversation, and just have an all-around chill and fun evening. So, welcome everybody. Uh, Spork, hey, welcome. Come, thanks for stopping in. Word. Yeah, so uh, okay. just... Uh, to get things started, just uh, uh, we can we can start with um, Ben and I. I know, uh, you know, just what writing projects are you currently working on? Um, I know you just came out with uh, your new Amosol uh, story, which I really enjoyed. By the way, um, are you now Thank working you. on another one, or are you kind of taking a taking oh, a break? Oh no, no, the the, the break has already happened. Um, I did. I did want to take a little bit of a break after after I finished uh, Amonsol Shadow series, because once I got finished with that, and uh, Theric let me know, he was like, "Hey, man, I want. I'd I'd love to put these in a PDF for you, make it look like a book and everything." And I was like, "Dude, that'd be sweet." And he sent it back to me, and it was 258 pages or something <laughs> like that. I was like, "Wait a minute, I didn't write all that." And then I started scrolling through. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I did." So, yeah, I took a little break after that one, um, and, and I was really just uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. I knew that it, there was going to be a follow-on, and, uh, and so it, it finally, it, I finally just kind of put my head down. I was like, okay, I need to think of something. Um, but in between, I did start, and this is, this is probably even more special to me, I did start on Pantheon Plus's articles page since they started doing articles. Um, I started a conspiracy theories section. Nice. You're so damn brave, too. <laughs> the, the, the content that you take a hold of and want to tell stories of, like, I can't think of myself being like, all right, yeah, I'm just going to, like, this is mine now. I'm going to tell a story about this. The one yeah. line that I learned about in lore that's not even there on the page, that's mine now. I'm going to just write a whole. <laughs> story yeah uh, I, I, I now own lore for anybody who's wondering um i i own all the lore now so <laughs> <laughs> well, those, those conspiracy theories man they're so fun because they're such like it's such a addendum to the main story of avonsal shadow with the, with the whole you know story of avondir and all that stuff and i finally learned what racha means like you've got this acronym this racha acronym now now I can't yeah. think of it off the top of my head, but I remember when I saw it, I was like, okay, now I finally understand why you've been signing yeah. off as Diva Racha. Yeah, because I've, yeah, I've been putting it on my signature line now when I post. Um, the resist the leader of the resistance against the corrupt house of Amonsol. There you go. Yeah. Amazing. So, you created your own, like, you've created your own movement, like your whole a syndicate of, of Hey, of man. Yeah, I hope, but so far I'm the only one wearing the tinfoil hat. Although I will say that I almost got you, Theric. You're like, hey, wait a minute. I think there might actually be something shady going on with that. <laughs> I have to say, I, I do think you're onto something. I, I've come around because once I learned more about the orcs. Um, so the last video I did, I talked a lot about the um, the orcs and their sort of tribal sort of culture and where they come from and in Avendir's past and Hangor. Um, and you know what? They got screwed. You know, they got totally, totally <laughs> Absolutely. screwed over by the humans. Absolutely. And and I get that they're they're like they're orcs. You know, like they're lesser. You know, like they should be. You know, fought and killed for loot. I get that. <laughs> but on the other hand, um, there's no mention of them in in the human history. What can I say? Like, how come the humans never said? You know, there happen to be these creatures that lived here who continuously assault our city. You know, why is that not mentioned anywhere? I find it very strange. So Ben and I, I think you yeah. you you rocked the boat. Yeah, I know. Well, I, you know what? I found out the hard way, too, after I started writing those that I'm writing to. You know, I thought I had a niche market before writing fan fiction for a game that's not even in alpha yet. <laughs> uh, but as soon as I wrote that, I have a cousin of mine who's been who's been editing my stories and giving me, uh, you know, negative uh, feedback. And so, you know, to keep me straight and yeah. uh I asked her to read some of the conspiracy theories, and she was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. 
was like, <laughs> I was like okay, I, I have now delved too deep into lore that yeah. <laughs> nobody can understand what I'm talking about. It's, it's just, can you fix my grammar at this point? Like, is my punctuation okay? Yeah. Um, but it's been fun. Though. It has been fun. Yeah. I mean, as long as you understand what's going on, that, that's really the main thing. Once you lose <laughs> track of it, then you, need to, then you need to take a break or you need to step back or something. But, you know, as yeah. long as it's in your mind, it makes sense. Hey, who cares, right? What would be really yeah. exciting, though, is if uh, the Racha faction starts showing up in game. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> well, cool. hey, hey, and, and uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a small, I'll give you a. Uh... Oh goodness! You lose him. So in in my new story, I am actually tying uh, the the whole premise of how uh, Black Rose Keep gets started with a movement that is the resistance against the throne. Oh, and wow. so, and it, and it all started back with uh, the, the guy that I'm actually writing about now. Oh. Um, and then was lost over the years and then was brought back. So right. are you delving into the, to the, like, the story of Amani Karos? Is that what you're doing? Because that, yes. that's a good story. And I, I think there's a lot there. I've thought about that one a lot. I did a video on Black Rose Keep a while ago, and it's like, yep, yeah. There's like, a, there's like something going on there. There's some sort of conspiracy theory. I totally see how you can tie that into your theories about uh, the 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 royals of Throne Fast, if you will. Yeah, yeah, and, and I know that they're not going to release like a ton of stuff on you know that how a Monte Carlos, you know, what happened to him and getting thrown out, you know, it'll probably be there for, for keepers and stuff. You know, if you want to delve into it, you'll probably find out some stuff. Um, but I think by that point, you know, I, I'll have already told the real story, so it won't even matter. <laughs> it's still they can say whatever he wants. It's fine. That's yeah. awesome. It's up to us to control the narrative. Apparently, there's no lore page, so I mean, absolutely, <laughs> that's right. I'm just filling the I'm just filling the gap. See yeah. a need, fill a need, right? Exactly. <laughs> Make yourself yeah. indispensable. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've had that thought too. You know, since there's no lore available, like on the main site, it's like we do have that sort of creative license right now to sort of do whatever we want. And like, absolutely. you know, maybe they maybe that's like somebody writes something that you know, resonates and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, like, can we have, nothing's out there right now. We're not bound, beholden to any sort of front facing lore, you know, like we can sort of, we can move with it a little. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Like, yeah. I can't, I can't wait to see the acts that you made up. The what? Show up. The one from, uh, uh, Amber Fate. The acts? What are you talking about? Was that you or was that Crow Singer? It might have been Crow Singer. Man, Crow Singer's been making some pretty decent stuff here lately. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they have. Yeah. No, no, it was. It was. It was. It. No, it wasn't you, though, Eric. It, it. It's a. Uh, it's Ninja. Um. Which one? The Dire Lords, Eric? Huh? Uh. No, I think I know what you're talking about. It was Booch, actually. I think he made that story about. Um, was it? it was like a paladin's uh, sword. One of his characters, Yurik something. If you're going to make me use my memory, I need more beer. Ahead of time, I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't study enough. So uh... Yeah, right? Come on now. Goodness no, gracious. No, no. Derek, Derek, it was you. It was... Um... Oh, we're going back to our original story. Okay. Yeah. No, it is. It, it was yours. Um... And the it board, was... The board uh, you the... It was... It was the gnome. It was... It was... It was, it was the... Teelan? Yeah. Uh... When they got transported, they got transported out. Right. And he, they wound up stealing the axe. Oh, that's from, right. Uh, yes. Yes. Causes yes. Is, uh, the other the other god. I can't remember his name now. Yeah, Rosic. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rosic. They stole yeah. his axe, and that's what they used to kill. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, and uh, to get away. Um. <clears throat> so so she slid it across the floor right when they were being. Yeah sort of held aloft by the vines. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Sorry, I think I would know my own stories, but I actually uh, have a terrible memory. Oh, uh, yeah, and they were like, oh my goodness, this is like the coolest axe ever. And yeah. then all of a sudden, like, no one wonders from it again. Yeah. Until it shows up in a dungeon 
And you're like, curse you, Esti LeMay, you stole my act. (laughs) So at this point, because you didn't give it a name, whatever the coolest axe is in the game that you can find, you can be like, yeah, that was the one. I I wrote that. I totally wrote that. All along. It was my intention all along. Yeah. (laughs) I like that. The genius. The genius comes out. (laughs) That's good stuff. So, Ted, what, what stories are you working on now, currently? Um, so I have a sort of a unnamed book, um, where we're going with, uh, Chronicles of Parazon, but, uh, it's, it's a thousand generation story. And we're trying to particularly point out one version of a overzealous human race against a hidden elfish race with a dark Lord that sort of isn't really a dark Lord, but just a different perspective of a person trying to expose the truth. So both these societies don't want things to change. One wants to stay hidden, one wants to stay in charge. And then there's this entity that wants to let everyone know that uh, things aren't what they seem. And this the gray area of political intrigue with um, warring intrigue because the human society is very militaristic because that's the only way that they keep dominion over like uh, a fey area, like orcs and uh, centaurs and giants and things like that. They have to keep strict militaristic uh, inclinations. Uh, But the world that has allowed them to be what they are uh, comes from an abandoned elfish world. So elves have gone away and society has moved forward where uh, humans have inhabited elvish territory, not knowing what they've been in, but knowing what it is for what it is, knowing that if you get into a a city that has walls and doors, I can close these doors, I can fortify these walls, but they might not know what magic mono wells are there, and certain individuals are learning that. And the uh, actual core subversive story of the whole thing is uh, interracial relationships mm. where there are humans who marry and love and get into elvish territory and elves who get in and love and get involved with human territory and it's all hidden and you get these subbreeds half elves of dominance and culture that are human and half humans and half elves that are subdominant culture that are in uh, elvish territory and they are both rejected by their mainstream. So they go out, but they still hate each other for what they are in their core realms. So there's these independent sub-societies that you're getting as you build out this upper society, all that are gonna be manipulated by this individual that says uh, all these people are lying to each other because they don't necessarily, they, they, they say they don't exist, mm-hmm. that there's no real threat. It's uh, extremely fucking difficult to write <laughs> it's really what it is because you have to fucking go excuse my french but you have to go so far back in elvish territory with the way that the story is you have to build a whole world about elves and then give them a reason to say bye well like, did you say it was a thousand generation story yeah so it's about <laughs> yeah yeah oh my gosh yeah so it's like uh oh between five and, and ten thousand actual years of the rotation of this particular planet Right. And um, orcs are the only secondary to elves in terms of longevity. So they've been going out through their entire existence, which is we bring them in in this particular story, but they're not really involved with the story all behind it. But they've experienced everything from the brunt of the sword. Mm-hmm. Like the whole way, like they have verbal history all the way back that tells the humans and the elves how they've really been living their lives, even though they don't understand it. And it only becomes towards the reject half half people, and forgive my French for saying that, it's not really a (laughs) blunt thing to say, but they are considered rejects of their society, right? They're not allowed to participate in each individual's, but they still hate each other, so there's still a warring tribe that are trying to figure out why they even hate each other to begin with. Um, So our society goes with an orphan throughout all of that uh sort of bouncing back in between each one because they they can pass for a human or an elf specifically Mm -hmm. but liked by none i've always found that to be like a really engaging sort of precept for any story is the idea of fitting into multiple places you know in, in 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 more or less versions um or in different ways 
Um, in a lot of the stories I read when I was growing up and a lot of the fiction I read growing up, I think, I, I think back about them. I think that was, there was that concept sort of th run th throughout of the stories that I really enjoyed was like, you know, an outsider in one culture, you know, um, accepted, but only in a limited way in another culture. I right. think that's such a, I think that's a powerful theme to incorporate in your story. So, you know, something like that, I think you can, you can take that so many ways and you can really make that work in a lot of ways. So that, that'll be awesome. It's also an easy, lazy writing tool too. So you can do fish out of water <laughs> perspective. So you can have a character who isn't belonging in anywhere. So you can be like, what does he see? Let me explain everything that he sees because he doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> um, totally no, true. Absolutely right. You know, you try to make it more unique and uh, that's the whole point of the background stories and making it work, right? That's it uh, sounds epic. It sounds it sounds like a it sounds like a yeah, big undertaking. Yeah, that's a it's what's been consuming and most of. That's it. fantastic. Like the orcs are getting so much love now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, everybody's giving orcs love now. Has to be. It's awesome. It has to Maybe be. it's because one of the few enemies we've seen in the footage they've shown <laughs> so far. It's the only thing we have a reference for. We're right. Like, well, we we know what they look like. We know how to kill them. Maybe they're good guys. You know, like just just go off on the orcs for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So, Derek, how about you? What have you been uh, working on if, you, if you've had time for writing? I know you've been really busy with the uh, Rewind and, and those endeavors. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, time's always a factor. But um, I was like I was saying before we went uh, we went live, you know, my writing is sort of like a, an RPG with a main quest and then a bunch of side quests. And I can't <laughs> finish my main quest because I keep going to side quests and finding other little things I want to do. So I've been writing the main one uh, for quite a while now, and I'm still working on it. It's slowly moving forward, but I've actually started a couple uh, little side projects. Um, the one of them that I'm really enjoying is a, uh, you know, tech. Your story is this big, wide, epic story. This is such a very simple little tale that I'm that I'm writing. It's basically a an ogre necromancer, and he's on a he's on a sort of week long ride, a journey from one city to another city. And basically, the the underlying ish, the underlying idea with this is that he's got a really close connection to, with his horse, with his steed. It's part of his identity. It's part of his, you know, he's, he's you know, it's a bond, a friendship. And as he's riding, things are happening to the steed. He doesn't understand what's going on. He's a necromancer, and his special talent is has always been um, raising animals from the dead. It's not raising humans, but raising animals. He's created armies of whatever you know in combat armies of wolf undead wolf armies of uh you know when he was learning at the uh, sort of the academy level he would raise you know reptiles little little mini armies of reptiles and so now he's on this you know he's, he's risen in the ranks of the necromancer sort of uh world and uh in the ogres and he's, he's you know achieved a status <clears throat> and now he's making this important trek to this other city but something's happening along the way with his horse. And it's, again, it's, it's a simple tale. It's not complicated, but it, I, I really like the small details of it. I like focusing on, um, you know, writing the, just the, the little flavor bits that make it interesting. And one of the things I struggle with in writing sometimes is, is dialogue, to be honest. Like I have, I have a hard time <clears throat> imagining conversations. So in some of the writing that I've done, you might see it where I'm like, you know, sometimes conversations don't flow as naturally. I think Tech and Ben and I, you guys both do a way better job with your conversations and how people relate to each other than I do. Um, so I decided to make a story about an ogre and his horse. So there's not a lot of conversation going on. So I, I just made it easy for myself, right? Play to your strengths. Play to your strengths. You know, like you said, you know, little tricks you don't have to make it so difficult for yourself. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, and then my other little one, which I barely, barely started, is um, it's a story about a Darkmer. Um, uh, Justin Gerhard talked about um, the Darkmer clerics and how he really likes the contrast because Darkmer aren't really yeah. sort of set up to be clerics, mm -hmm. and he he creates that point in his um, in his design. And I thought that was such a cool idea, so I wanted to write a story about a Darkmer cleric, and. Um, it's it's really dumb, but it's just sort of it's going to be very humorous and stupid. But um, you know, yeah, that's where it's starting from. That's a starting point, uh, and we'll go from there. But um, yeah, I, I don't think you don't. Obviously, I, not to interrupt you there, but don't think it's starting a murder is dumb. I tried to start a scar. Oh my god, the the crap that I came up with and them like just like flowing through their huts and trying to get through. Like I didn't have a story. I just had a bunch of garbage of people. <laughs> Like just aggressive individuals being aggressive towards each other. I was like, what am I writing? 
Right? Well, my, so. exactly. That's it, right? My my story starts out with some sort of like celebration in uh, Sirenai's rest, where this dark mer she's having things are being thrown at her from like the windows. You know, it's like one of those typical scenes where you're an outcast or you're like your your city. You're not loved in the city that you're in, and they're throwing garbage at her, and they're like, you know, just just not being you know very welcoming. Anyway, that's that's the starting point. So we'll see where that goes. Mm. But um, I really want to finish my main my main one too. It's just it's taking a long time, and it's sort of <clears throat> wandering over, wandering around a few different places, but we'll, yeah. we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, I remember hearing many, many, many moons ago <laughs> about this this tale that you were going to tell that was going to be darker than yeah. Caleb's tale, and it was going to be this fantastic thing. And Yeah, I know, I know. Well, me and you were going back and forth on the forums for a long time. It was just, it was basically like our own forum. It was, it was me and Ben and I back and forth. I'm like, somebody else pop in here because we're just talking to each other here. I'm sure VR is like, what the hell are these two guys doing, right? (laughs) And um, yeah. I'm surprised, I'm surprised fan fiction made it into the new website. (laughs) They're like, look, you guys just take this and roll. We're not going to include it. Or you can look at it the other way. Fan fiction made it into the new website, but the lore did not. So what does that tell you? That's you a go. really good point. <laughs> Holy, yeah, you, that's exactly right. <laughs> they don't need it. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is a dark Justin just tale. gave up. He was like, "Oh man." Uh, uh, we're carrying this story. Do whatever. Uh, I don't know. Without without seeing the backbone of things and seeing the new lore page, I hope we're not. I hope. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's like not a good it's idea. So, there, there's going to be. There's obviously going to be. Uh, Mounts for ogres, and uh, <laughs> right? right. I think I wrote about griffin riding yeah. too. I'm like, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh god, you're in big trouble, Tack. You're gonna get crucified by the community. That was, that was, my, that was my prologue, okay? Don't even. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they better get busy for... on assets. We're cranking this stuff out. <laughs> yeah. When the game fails because of flying mounts tech, we know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> the foundational asset. Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Big trouble. Remember the yeah. <laughs> That's, oh, that's well, crazy. So, uh, Theric, I was going to ask you, what made you think of uh, bringing the lore you know into the rewind? Like, you just, it was all of a sudden, like, this is a segment now, deal with it. Like, why was that important to you? And why was that like as successful as it is? Like, uh, why do you think that happened, dude? Um, you know what? I don't know. I, you know, I, I wanted to have something. I just wanted to have a little in between piece that wasn't um, wasn't so long. Our our segments tend to be very long, so I wanted something that was just like a little quick, digestible thing. But the problem is, is that the show, the whole premise of our show, the rewind, is. Um, involving community and community voices and bringing people in. And this is basically just me telling something, me talking. So that it felt a little bit awkward from that perspective. I didn't really want to do it. I wanted to make it, but it it was also requested. You know, I had people who said they wanted to hear lore bits. And and I, one of the things that um, Drac always says is that um, he relies on me to, to tell him the lore because he's just not the kind of guy who can read it. He's not going to read it on his own. He's going to just like, you know, so if somebody's willing to say, if somebody's willing to give lore and willing to listen to it, I'd be a fool to turn that down and say, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, if there, if there's a, if there's an appetite for it, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So I, I try to keep them short though. I really am really, it's really important to me to keep them short and not go deep on anything. Like I, uh, my, my brain always wants to go, you know, down every little rabbit hole and, and find the details, but yeah, these are just like, for though. Yeah, right, exactly. So I just try to keep it like an overview. And um, so like for the one, I'll give you guys a little preview, but the one we're going to talk about, we're going to do for this show this weekend is about just about the summit at Vezu, right? That summit that brought everybody together to sort of the six, the sacred six to um, to put an end to the deicide war, to sort of come together to to deal with the ravaging lord once and for all, right? And um, it's just little little important pieces of lore like that that I think people can relate to. If you go too yeah. deep, you get you, people get lost. Or if you go, if it's too simple, it's like it's just generic, you know. So I try to find that middle ground with it, but um, it's fun. Right. I enjoy having it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Then everyone else does, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. Any, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, that was it. That's all I got. Are there any bits that have sparked some extra conversation outside that you've you've brought up in the rewind? Like any. Um, 
What do you mean, like, like, uh, like me and Minus have talked about sort of separately, or no, like... no, no, just in the like, if you've you've uh, you know had your your lore fed, and then it's sort of fueled some extra. Uh... Um, no, not really, not really, no. because it's it's um, it it what it does actually it does give me ideas on videos I want to make. Sometimes mm. is what it'll do. <clears throat> um, there are I have idea I have like a bunch of sort of video scripts that I, when I have an idea for something, I just start it. I just write it a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I, you know, sometimes I'll come up with something for the, for the rewind and I'll be like, oh, I could do a video about that. This, the Sanctums, for example, is one that I have. Um, I wanted to do it. I was yeah. debating whether to do that for the rewind. Mm -hmm. but I'm like, you know what? I should actually do a video about all the different Sanctums because there's, there's actually like four or five of them. And sure. you know, we, don't, we don't know a ton about them, but um, you could definitely ring some information out of the, the lore that exists but uh yeah it's just about ideas i think yeah awesome mm -hmm. so have, have you guys noticed over the course of writing um <laughs> the fan fiction has the the, your, the way you've written changed at all absolutely I, yeah yeah yeah, um, I had no idea what I was doing. I the first, I hadn't written in seven years <laughs> before I put the prologue up. Like it was just like uh, from the last stream, it was like it was Irish guilt. Like I felt I needed to do something for the community because I won entry into this fantastic environment and community. Um, so the only thing that I thought was like, hey, I used to do this creative writing thing. I guess I could try and make a creative writing story for them. <laughs> and I have not so much work to do on Fridays. So let me try and write some stuff on Fridays when I don't have so much work to do. And so I wrote the prologue and it was like, it's only like 700 words. That's, that's not that much. It's just a, it's a stupid story about a sister finding their brother who has forsaken the, the cleric truths and become a paladin in this particular story. And I tried to make it epic in the particular map that was available at the time, um, overseeing the veil in the background and the purples and the grays and the seas and the winds and things that you would get on that sidelines. And uh, yeah, you know, you, you get a particular character and you try to build off of that. Um, but I would, that's horrible. That if you read that, like, like I've edited it, thankfully, so you can't read the original version guys <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, oh, i got it saved tech don't worry oh, yeah. yeah i wouldn't say that there are uh, everything that happens in that video i did recently i didn't show the fan fiction section i do i've got all your guys' stories saved don't worry about it <laughs> see i was wondering about that too i was like i bet you he has already saved everybody's goofy stories too i had oh, it man. in the video too and i cut it out because i'm like all right it's just a little bit you know it's a side thing i'll do another one but yeah you're right. yeah. <laughs> yeah all right that's great um no <laughs> so, uh, no, I'm just, just having fun. Um, by by the time you get to the the first chapter, um, I I see more of what I want to see writing. I, I learn how to use my words more to create the image that I have in my head. And as you move forward to even the most recent chapter, um, I'm like I'm almost at the character that I'm writing in the room at that point. Um, yeah. And maybe it's good, maybe it's not. I don't. I have no idea. Uh, people seem to like it. You guys seem to like mm -hmm. it. It seems to resonate. Um, but it's more so experiences and how you've like. I don't, I don't know. I have uh, individuals have told me. I don't fucking know because I'm not smart enough to know. I don't, I don't have a psychology degree. But people have told me that I have a high emotional IQ, which means that I could see a person and I could see what they're feeling. And in particular moments throughout all my life. I've witnessed how people feel and really awful, really good, really wonderful, really terrible, really awkward, really in insecure moments. And I just have the ability to put that into the characters that I've seen. And um, a lot of the people that I'm writing about, I'm cheating because I've met these people. They're just yeah. combinations of particular people who I've met and I've just put into the story. And uh, the thankful thing that I have with the fan fiction writing that we've been doing is just I've learned how to do that better, how to, how to manipulate my thoughts and memories into a better character and change names and change situations and use random number generators to get scenarios that I wouldn't think of beforehand. And um, yeah. like halfway through the last chapter, I, it sucked, to be honest with you. My last chapter sucked so bad that I had to throw in a fight scene. 
that was it. Like, <laughs> there's, there's a bunch of stuff that happened in it that doesn't make sense until it's like, okay, now I could tell you uh, there's more about the the son of the Corrin character in that one because he got himself to a lot of trouble with his roguish individuals that I had to develop that whole sub story to make the scene work for me. And I can develop it as I go, which is what takes so fucking long with the chapters is because I can't just give you guys like a story because it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of thing. Um, like when I get the pilgrim from Kadasa, that's going to be awful. Like there's going to be so much dwarven background that I have to now throw into the story. That's going to take like a chapter or two. Like why would a dwarf be in the middle of the steeps? Which doesn't even exist anymore. It's the the, the, the high hills, uh, but, you know. It's it's crazy. So I've, you know, I'm sorry to hog the mic for a bit, but yeah, like, like my writing has definitely evolved for from the original point. Well, that I've just I wouldn't I wouldn't be too hard on yourself either. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing to to be able to have that empathy for other people's feelings, but it's a whole other thing altogether to be able. to To understand mm-hmm. Fair enough. and so that that is where you know and and you do you do it you have you've done a really good job with that as a matter of fact i i really enjoy listening um to your stuff because it's the way it's written it, it's not written in some high fantasy you know strange land they you know they talk weird they act weird it's very like you know, if you transplanted these people, you know, to Earth, you know, that would be the same conversation that they would be having on the subway. I, yeah, totally, totally and I think agree people with that. Grip it, you know, people like that, and that's what I—that's what I strive to. I don't know if I do it or not, but that's what I—that's what I try to do. I try not to write. You put a lot more chance into yours. You put it like you're, you're you absorb the realm and the, the risk and the things that are happening. Like I haven't involved like my stories don't involve the main story like you have. Like I can't I don't know how to do that. Like if I threw my characters in that, it would fall apart. Like I don't like things are under attack from the ravaging lord and be like, okay, and he killed me. That's what I got. <laughs> like, I can't write entry around. Yeah, that. but you can write, how does he feel? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, a 30 page, you know, conversation while one's dying. That, that would be your, your yeah. arena attack. Oh, yeah. my, oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't even remind me of that. Like, the, the very last, the very last story in uh, The Fox and the Wolf where Avendir confronts Osari. Right. Like, when I got to that, I was like, oh, crap, this is going to be horrible. (laughs) Like, how do I write this without sounding completely cheesy? Right, yeah. (laughs) You know? You're like, okay, well, let's have the king meet up with this demigod, and what is it that they say to each other? I don't know. Let's fight it. I don't know. And how humble can we make the environment for this humble conversation? (laughs) Yeah, I know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I, yeah. you know, I, I totally, I totally agree with what you're saying, Ben and I. Like, Tech, your 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 stories feel like, you know, it it, it could absolutely be ha- something that's happening down the street. You know, like they're very real and they're very relatable yeah. in terms of like they don't feel like fantasy characters necessarily. I mean, they right. are, but they're like, um, I feel like you know them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, I, know them. That's, I, I know these people. <laughs> that's because I do. That's the names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that um, that empathy is such a great asset, man. Like, it, it's one of the it's one of the primary things that I think good writers have is the ability to sort of feel what other people feel and, and to sort of be empathetic and, and to know um, how, you know, people relate to different emotions. So if you're saying something and, uh, you know, that's difficult or sad, how does that person react? What do they, what would they say to sort of in reaction to that? I think you're really, really good at that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's such a, it's such a nice, it's an easy style to read for me, at least. I, I find your stories very easy to read. So no, yeah, I agree. I appreciate that, guys. You guys are making me blush. So, so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
No, it's, it's good, man. It's really good. And, and Ben and I, yours, yours are yeah, like, I like what you said too about, you know, what tech said about yours are always have this epic sort of nature to them. Like there's always something big going on that's connected to the world. I love that aspect of it too, where it's, yeah. you know, it's like in, in trying to follow your stories because <clears throat> there were so many of them for one was, was tricky. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, You're welcome. Like, You're welcome for that. Yeah. And now, now everybody's like, Oh, man he's probably going to ask me what i thought about it or something now i feel like i have to read that 700 page whatever <laughs> <you just did. laughs> take it slow man take it slow that's what i did but, yeah 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 it, that's why i'm like okay one one little bit at a time that's about all <laughs> if i make it any longer than this no one is going to read this well what the <laughs> la- you just posted one there what was the latest am- the latest amon sols one you posted yeah what was it called? Yeah, yeah, I haven't read it yet. Ammon, it's, it's called it's called Ammon Saul's Focus, and I will give I'll give a shout out to my daughter on this one too because um, the last two stories she has uh, helped me with subtitles. All right, nice. and so the the uh, um the one after uh, Fox and the Wolf was uh, in the Shadow of the Sun. Right, I was teasing her because one night she said something that talked she that talked about the shadow of the sun or something like that, and and I just like started making fun of her because I'm like that's like it's such a dumb comment. The sun doesn't have a shadow, and then I started thinking about it. and I was like, but that everything. is very like that's meaty. By the way, yeah. everything everything. Is- so, yeah, so I totally, yeah, so I totally just kind of grabbed that and 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 twisted it to fit what I was already writing. Um, and then on this le- on this next one, the the whole story is Amonsol's focus, which is basically about trying to gain control, uh, humans trying to gain control and power of the continent, you know, as much as they can grab. Right. Um, and, and it's not, and it's not so much about just being power hungry as it is, it, like it usually is. It, it it's based off of a fear, you know. So Here's they here. come here. They've had this traumatic event. Um, the fr- you know, they they land there, and that in that winter, um, you know, they probably lose countless more people that were lost just from the. Uh, the relocation and and so you know trying to survive you overcompensate and i want to control as many things as i want to control so so the and and that's kind of the the story behind amazon avendir as i as i write about them is it's not so much that they're that they're bad because they want to be bad it's the circumstances that they've lived through have led them to to have a worldview that looks at everything this way, and then Dude, my main character has a worldview that looks at it a completely other way. What made so, you think Avengers? Like, what what was Avengers hook? Like, what made you think that that was your rival? Well, like, how did that happen um, to you? Reading the lore. Um, it it actually was an accident. Um, when I started writing the story. I was like, well, I've got to give my character something to do. And I wanted to start off at the very, very beginning. So, but, you know, the very first story about Hanai starts off in the Cursed Frost, that yeah. first winter. And everybody's just like in little makeshift shelters and encampments. They don't have anything to their name. They're trying to find their family members. They don't know what's going on. And, uh, and so we only had a little bit of information about what happened there. Yeah. It's like Amonsol. Okay. So Amonsol's there. How did he become king? Like what made him so special? And so, you know, if I'm going to tie something epic into here and, and make this story, cause I kind of had an idea that I wanted to, um, I wanted to be kind of like a, someone who affects the things that are in the lore, but from the sidelines that you never will hear about, you'll never see, yeah, you'll never yeah. know their name, but they've had an impact somewhere on the world. Right. And yeah, so, I get, I get. And, and so it, the the whole thing with with Amosol, um, and, and for those who haven't read it, it, the way I the way I couched it was, uh, Hanai, the main character, um, 
he is actually the bastard son of Amonsol from Vast Demith. And so no one knows that because during the the relocation, um, most people's memories are, are super shoddy. And so they don't really remember a lot about their home world. And so it, it just kind of, Amonsol knows a little bit. Uh, the grandfather that saves him knows a little bit, but he dies in the first story. And so it, it, it's kind of this unknown thing that Hanai is actually, his lineage is also heirs to the throne. Uh, um, but, okay. in, but, but in the, you know, to keep everything going forward properly, Avendir, once he learns about it way later on, is like, well, it's probably best for mankind if we kind of keep the status quo and not yeah, introduce all this right. new political intrigue and, and problems, which just further deepens the divide, the chasm yeah. between the two families and, and really makes a lot of conflict there. So That's awesome. But yeah, it was, it, was, it was complete. It just kind of it snowballed is what it did. I mean, I had no master plan when I wrote that first story. Right. And yeah, I wrote yeah. the first story, and I was like, oh, okay, well, now what can I do? Yeah. And now what... <laughs> I don't think any of us had a plan. I know I didn't. I know technically yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah. We just started yeah. writing, and we're like, whatever happens, happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll fix it in the next one. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, no, it's, it was all dopamine, you know? Like, a, yeah. oh, <laughs> a hundred people, hundred people read it? I hate to write longer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. no, exactly. yeah, exactly. yeah, and and for some reason, you know, it, I I don't care if if people read right. this, yeah. but for some reason I do. Yeah, and right. when I exactly. post something, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just post that. Oh, that's nice. You know, I hope somebody enjoys reading it as much as I enjoy writing it. Yeah. And then five yeah. minutes later, you're going back and you're taking a look. <laughs> how many views does this have? I wonder. Mm -hmm. how many has yeah. anybody commented on this? <laughs> but no, at the yeah. same time, I know. What am I doing? I don't care. I'm not writing this for, for yeah, but you know. All, all three of us have, well, maybe not Theron, because he's, like, involved with it week to week. But, like, I know that I've, like, disconnected from the things that I'm doing within the community. And I come back, like, months later and be like, oh, shit. Like, okay. All right. All right okay. I love, let me take a couple days and write something and flesh it out and give them something like, all right, here you go. I'm Mark Summers and this is a uh, you know, double dare. Yay! Throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny. It's funny how it's like, I, I, I was the same way. I was like, I decided that, you know, it's like, I've, we talk about our writing, you know, Thorn Deep, you asked about how our writing has changed as we've, you know, gone down this sort of path. And it's like, when I started doing this, my idea was just, I don't really care anymore. You know, I'm not, I, I'm too old to sort of like, be cautious about this kind of stuff anymore it's like i'm just gonna do it and whatever happens happens you know like i i write for my work and i i write professionally and i'm a good writer i know that but i've never written creatively so i'm like i just want to do this and see what happens it's sort of like yeah. a science experiment right and you know i was like oh this isn't that bad actually i'm enjoying myself i'm enjoying doing it and you, if you read talon's tale you'll see it starts off real, it's pretty basic. It's very basic. And it's very much like just somebody seeing what they're doing. But then you get to the end chapter. And even just, you know, to, to say myself, I, like the end chapter is way better than the first chapter. And as yeah. it goes through, yeah. it just in terms of like the, I think the the, the depth of it is better. Um, but um, yeah, you know, and, and then I posted it and I was like, I would I would check. I would definitely check to see who was reading it and who was commenting. Yeah. And I got a, lots of cool comments from you know lots of different people. And I think Basgrim commented on one of mine. I was like, oh okay, Basgrim knows it out. Yeah, and it's so funny. And that meant a lot. He was the he was the torch bearer. That's why he's got the torch on his uh, name there, right? Yeah, so, right. So it's like a, a little bit of encouragement goes a long way. And then next thing you know, you've got you know another thing going and three little side stories, and you're doing a you're doing a, a show with three other authors. You know, and it's like, yeah. wow, where did this come from? You know, yeah. so that was fun. That's yeah. definitely fun. Say that much. Yeah, I, I you know, it, and and on the same subject of, of changing writing styles, I I think in all in all the stuff that that all three of us have written on there. Um, 
it, it seems that the the first several ones I mean, you're you're almost writing you because you're I, I don't know if it's it's nerves or just trying to get into the flow of it but it seems like it's a a summary of events mm-hmm. yeah right. Yeah. And then Absolutely. the more you write, the more the more you get into details and moments and and those those special things last longer and you write more about it. And uh, <laughs> and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, "Oh man, I'm on like the ninth chapter of this." Like Right. Yeah. But you see that too. I mean, I'm gonna I, I I read, you know, fantasy novels and things like that. And you kind of see that in people who are like, "I wrote a book." And then the publishing company is like, "Write two more." We want three of these. And then you're like, okay, all right. So, like, here's the story as I fleshed it out as again. They're like, okay, great job. Six more. That's how developers do. And we're doing that naturally as we're just like, okay, you know, I like this story. Yeah. People like it too. And I enjoy, you know, it, I enjoy having a Saturday afternoon off. Excuse me, indigestion there. Uh, I enjoy having a Saturday afternoon off and being like, okay. So uh, my mixtape ended and I didn't change my mixtape and I had listened to the engine of my car for the next like 30 minutes for whatever reason. <laughs> so I was listening to my car engine for the next 30 minutes. I thought of these three scenes, like, so uh, for, just for fun, right? So I've been tossing around a couple ideas about how I want the next chapter to go. Um, and I don't know whether or not I want the next chapter of my book to be about Stu, uh, Stuart, uh Aristale, which is the son and uh, the cousin of the twins the son of daniel and the story as we're ongoing i don't know if i want it to be about him who just was poisoned who is causing a ruckus in town but we don't know he's been causing a ruckus in town or if i want it to be about violet because i really have disregarded her so far since the prologue basically that i need yep. to bring her in so there's two choices that you have when you have these stories that i'm longing do i have violet resurrect the Earl's man who has the tabard, which gets the family out of a lot of trouble, right? Or do I let Stu hold the reins and say, let me hide the bodies for the story, right? So how do I tear that story down and say, where do I move in the next couple of chapters if I let Stuart turn around and be like, no, mom, I got this. Don't worry about it. And disappears for the next chapter while my family arrives at the Aristotle Manor. Or do I let Aristotle Manor be like, okay, my family's here. Thank God we can take care of this problem together. And the family unloads the the things that they have in the car and we deal with the quote unquote trash in, in the front yard, right? We resurrect people, people we can't resurrect, things like that, and move on with the story. So it's it's fun. It's very fun to go through all this like conceptual thoughts and the way that mm-hmm. we can move it in. Uh, what I try to do as well, which we haven't seen quite yet, the cleric hasn't been uh, announced yet. So the last chapter that I released was in tandem with the enhancer and uh, I'm sorry, enchanter rather, and what we can get through with uh, those particular classes and how they move forward. It was very fun that they moved that class forward at the same time that I put that chapter out, which was pure imaginary. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I got a question for you guys. And I was thinking about this today when I was thinking about the show tonight. And let me ask you this. Do you think that your writing is affected by the fact that it's occurring in the universe that's part of an MMO. Like, does, does the MMO aspect of this, you know, um, universe affect how you're writing your story? Or does it play into any of your ideas? And I don't know if it does or not. I'm not sure about that. Are, do, you guys, do you guys think that plays a role in your writing? Um, I would have to say the only... The only thing that affects my writing, other other than the lore, because obviously I'm I'm back in history a lot, um, yeah, yes, is is really just classes. Yeah, you know, Fair and enough. and I try and I try really really hard not to be overt about it. Like I I I try not to say like and the paladin came out, but I try to convey the concepts of what they do. And see if people can pick up. Oh, he's doing something like a monk, right. like a warrior, like a rogue. Um, instead of coming out and saying something like that, you know, obviously, someone like a paladin. I mean that that is a that's a title. Yeah. You know? Yes, it is. Um, right. And so, you know, obviously, if you're a paladin, you're gonna you're gonna say that a cleric. That's a title. A rogue. 
it's not a it's not a title warrior uh, not really title right right and so and so i try to steer clear of that kind of that kind of stuff but Makes as sense. far as like other other people i would love I, okay <laughs> so, yeah I have to change my I have to change my answer on this one now that I think about it. So yes, it does, and and this is the way. I would I am just dying to try to catch up with the timeline, so that I can incorporate what my characters are doing into some of the stories that have happened from all the other writers on fan fiction. Okay. I want to run into those characters and they have something going on in the background at the same time I have something going on. That's and they, they, they cross paths at some point. <laughs> I, I, I've been wanting to do that so, 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 so bad, but I'm Stop so far back in the past, yeah, I haven't been able to do it. You're supposed to do that now. Um, uh... <laughs> I'll jump in on that. Yes. Uh, so I, I try to look at like um, uh, gathering herbs and, and uh, obviously there's mines happening. So there's mining traits and things like that, that I obviously, and again, against what Ben and I has been, been doing is I, I, I label my characters considerably by their class. It's an easy descriptor uh, to, to not regurgitate the, the, um, specific uh, specific names like either either yeah. their particular name or their gender like she or her or he or him or they are there i try yeah. to dive into their actual class and, and things like right. other descriptors as it yeah. goes and it, and it worked like you know a, a wizard's request it works super well that's what i was going to say too. in the way that you're writing the story yeah. yeah. Well, it's yeah. I, I guess I should put more thought into that. But anyway, I've basically fleshed out majority. Like I, I, I know the end end arc to a Faith and Family, but a Wizard's Requests goes into Fairfail, which hasn't been exposed yet. That's why it stops because the next chapter in uh, a Wizard's Request is a dinner side conversation between the Druid, her younger brother, the Rogue, and the Wizard while Daniel sits there and is trying to muster up enough courage to tell them I quit this group. So he gets to hear their story about fighting what they thought were Spriggans, trying to find the relic that brought them to this particular part of the story. And they're going to have a very tough time because there's still only three people trying to do something that should be a full group. So um, I don't know enough about the world. Like, I can go off of what we've seen, <laughs> but... Like I don't, I, I don't want to make jackass out of the characters, right? If I want to bring them into the future, so I have to delay that particular story. Um, it's it's tough to go <laughs> to go through all that. I wish that the lore page was back up. That's the best thing I could say. <laughs> no, you need to you need to just start talking about. And they walked by this gray box. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. A strangely untextured rock appeared before them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he threw the gray polygon. Right. The the Ted Hick had a hold of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. Uh, no, it's a uh, it's a good foundation, and uh, I trust Justin to get it done. So yeah. uh, we're all just we're all just uh, part of his M and Soul shadow, if you will. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Stool Maze Shadow. It's Stool Maze Shadow. It's Stool Maze Shadow. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just little wannabes down here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to let um, Theric go. He has a prior commitment. I really want to thank you for coming on. Uh, it's been a real pleasure having you join our conversation tonight. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's it's been great. I I, I always love the the tavern idea. I uh, I'm always good. I'm always down for a good tavern conversation. But yes, yeah. I do have to. I have other commitments to go record my my little podcast here. So I got to go do that. Um, but uh, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Likewise, Derek. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to do this again sometime. Definitely. We'll, yes, we'll... absolutely. I love it. All right, guys. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as he drops out this, yeah, all of our uh, screens are going to...
go wonky on. So I'm gonna. All right, while well, you figure this out, I'm gonna. I mean, Ben and I, are you hanging out? What are we doing? Are we chilling? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I've I've got nothing to do right now, so. Can I go get a beer? Can I get a beer? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I apologize yeah, to absolutely. the um, viewers here. <laughs> the uh, as we lose folks. Second, yeah, I, will I, get... I definitely wanted to. I wanted to take at least a moment to mention. You know, from the inception of the tavern, um that has resurrected the fan fiction uh on the website oh really what? and uh, just creating just creating that the the role player uh chat channels in the tavern yeah like i never would have imagined they would get that much traffic well that's awesome i'm really glad to hear that um I mean, because I, re I mean, I'm glad it's fantastic that what you guys are doing. And so I really, you deserve to have more, more traffic, have more people see the. Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Terminus's Tavern RP channel. Oh. Yeah. Like j that, that has, that has resurrected the, the lore on, on Pantheon MMOs uh, site, just their fan fiction. Oh, cool. Um, the, the, from what I've been reading, because I get on there, I actually will go back, you know, I'll, I'll check it every few days, and I'll go back and I'll read everything that's been posted in the role players uh, chat channel, and just to see what everybody's doing in there, um, because it's so interesting. And, uh, um, all of a sudden, you know, early on, as soon as that, that RP was put there, uh, Crow Singer started, started writing a lot in the RP chat channel. Oh, nice. And then all of a sudden, she's putting tons of stories on uh, the yeah. fan fiction site. Yeah. I was, I was literally, like, I dropped a beer thinking about bringing up the next topic, and you guys already talked about it. That's awesome. You're talking about Crow Singer, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, rocking it, hundred percent rocking it, carrying it, like bringing me out of the shadows, like feeling like I need to contribute something. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Talk about yeah. putting the pressure on. Yeah, uh, Just, and and writing stories that I wouldn't have thought about too. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to get into the halfling's backstory. Um, <laughs> Just like in the, no, not like in a, in a in a like an offensive way. It's just that they're um, they have three major cultures at clashing with each other that. Yeah, she has, she has brought out right. Like I chose one. I like I was like I'll talk about the main clan, and I haven't even got there yet. <laughs> like, I, I hinted I hinted about it, and I was gonna make them a bunch of bards that just argued with each other. And now I'm like, oh shit! I like there's like there's a culture there. I gotta represent them. Okay, shit. Uh, so it's just I, I I'm glad that she's around. Honestly, I don't think I would have written recently if it wasn't for her. Yeah, definitely some great. Great stories, Crow. So thank you for that, yeah. Crow Song. Yeah. 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 yeah it, it definitely has a resurrected interest in uh, in the fan fiction site, and just rubbing off on people who come uh, into Terminus Tavern. I mean, just the amount of traffic that Terminus Tavern is still having is pretty fantastic. And there is there's way more people writing in the role player section, which I, I feel like is leading to people kind of kind of delving in more. You know, obviously the the whole, uh, you know what what I was hoping would happen is that people would start to have better relationships within the community, and you get to know more people. But aside, I think a side effect of, of what's going on, especially with Theric pushing on, on Pantheon Plus, um, a lot of the stories uh, that are getting posted on fan fiction, I think are pushing people into doing more with the lore on this than they maybe would have otherwise. And, what, uh, I was going to say, what's your over-under on, uh, do you think that when the new lore page comes up, are we going to get new lore? 
are we just going to get the lore like re reinforced or what do you think we're going to see I think they'll have I, I personally think they'll drop a couple of new nuggets I don't think <laughs> there's going to be anything earth shattering but I definitely think there's going to be a few new nuggets in there alright um, who would you rather see uh, explored more the scar or the mirror Oh, I mean, per- that's a hard one. Personally, personally, I would like to, I would like, I would like to see more about the scar, just because they're so different. Yeah, yeah like are. I've already watched The Little Mermaid. I kind of know what they have going on. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, the scar is, you know, Disney yeah. hasn't made a film about them yet, so I don't know anything about them. <laughs> Yeah, but um, right. uh, Firefly has. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Okay, I don't know what you guys are talking you about. Oh you, oh, you. Fire, oh, oh, the show. You need to. You need to go back and binge watch Firefly. the TV show Firefly. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. I've seen the the like. I thought you were like, like Grave of the Fireflies or some nonsense like that. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Different story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's sci fi, but they've got their version of the scar. Yeah. Firefly, Serenity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting. Okay. But yeah, I, I would love to see the scar. I, yeah. and, and, you know, something that Theric was talking about earlier, uh, you know, trying to find something to write about the scar. <laughs> I think if you wanted to do that, you would have to do something like put them completely alone, like in the middle of a desert, like, <laughs> <laughs> nondescript location, and then something just awful happens. I was thinking when when we were talking about that earlier about you know that having a scar and writing some kind of poem, like some kind of very dark poem, like Edgar Allan Poe esque. Huh. Right. About some horrible, horrible thing that happens to a scar while he's by himself out in the desert or something. I can it would see. be so fantastic. <laughs> but that's about the only way that I can think about writing about a scar because nothing else. I'm like, what else can they do that's interesting? I don't know. Yeah, yeah right. So how are you? See, I just don't know how angry they are, really, or if they just are angry at their like, like I don't. I, 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 are they so angry at what happened to them that they would be angry at everything 100% of the time? Or are they just yeah. underdeveloped where they just haven't met other cultures to let them know that they're, you know, there's life outside of a dirt hut type deal, right? You don't need to be a malicious monster. Maybe they need yeah. to learn it. Would you introduce a character for them? How does that work, right? Like, is it, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're just fast. I mean, it's yeah, like they and, were and... so angry to begin with, their own God punished them by. Yeah. Making the bones come out of their body. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least Jeez. that's what I understand it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, you know, and they wrote, you know, we have we have some of those stories about the orcs, you know, and we have a lot of their backstory and the writings about it. But as I read through there, the the stories that's been posted, it sounds so much like a a culture that has hubris writing about some other culture that they feel like is super backward. And, and it's not, uh, the way I'm going to do it actually in my new story, uh, if you read to the end of my new story, there's the kind of the second main character that's going to last through this whole tale is going to be an orc female. Cool. Okay. And, um, and so the idea I got after reading through that lore, I was like, I, I, want, to, I want to try to show that um, the orcs are misunderstood by humans. Okay, yeah. And so the lore that's written about them is only, you know, kind it's of human, surface human. stuff and human. not totally... It's human. Yeah. Or, right, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. That's just the humans, you know, the way they view the orc. It's not the way the orc view the orc. Right. And so having having 
the ability to sit and have a human character and an orc character have a conversation and try to work out those differences between the cultures. Right. Um, it, that's going to be fantastic, I think. And we, we have a little bit more about them, but I would imagine the scar, you know, would kind of be the same way. Okay. They're just misunderstood. If you understood the culture better, some of the practices and violence may make more sense. Mm. You know, you could probably spin it that way. Yeah, I wonder what age they're throwing us into, to be honest with you. Now that, now that the lore has been pulled back, right? So, because we're kind of in it, you know, as, as individuals who are part of the like foundation of the way the story is going and everything, like, there's a lot of places that can, they can put us, right? Um, they can put us in the middle of the Revenant's War, right? They could put us at the end of the DSI War and we can be picking up the pieces of it. Um, yeah. I mean, we haven't even seen White Thaw really in uh, any of their, their, you know, um their streams or anything like that so it's very yeah. it, there are so many options to choose from and we don't even know much about um what would you know geography drives a character a lot too right so what what yep. is it about uh southern uh what would not not kin's reach uh what is it uh, goodness gracious what's the other continent uh not not king's reach not white thaw Oh, uh, you're talking about the um, yeah rainfall. West, rainfall, yeah. So, rainfall. What, what is what does it look like on the, like what did it look like before uh, the scar showed up? Like, if it, is it a tropical area that they tore apart? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> massive like gutty gully. It used to be there. Yeah, right. Because there's just a bunch of mud huts and violent people that are killing each other now. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, right, and that's that's. I mean, well, who else is supposed to be on Rainfall too, right? It's, uh, not the elves, but there's the uh, um, gnomes are supposed to be touched down there. Is that is that no Dark Mirror there? Uh, yeah, right? yeah, Dark Mirror on Rainfall. Um, and Scar. Uh, the ogres. They might be. The ogres are there. Yeah, okay. Scar there. I thought the ogres were in Waitha. Who's it? Who's in Waitha then? Gnomes, dwarves, and somebody else, right? Are they the Ashen Elves? Um, supposed to be and they're, they're not a playable character no. are gnomes in white thought yeah wait the white thought has okay yeah that i think that's i think that's it though um because the ogres the ogres are up on the uh the northern part of rainfall if i remember correctly up on the northern side of the continent okay um yeah. by the frozen they're thing. very close they, they're they're very close to the dark myrrh which is why um, during the Deicide War, they had joined forces very, very temporarily until they decided uh, okay. we fight better apart. <laughs> yeah, keep keep different four fronts, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm trying to think, because I, I thought there were nine races starting out. So who's that ninth? Oh, the halflings. Duh. Okay, that's who they are, right? Elves, humans, and halflings are all on King's Reach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess if you... Mm. I guess if you consider... Because that... I can't tell if that's a... If that's a separate landmass over there where the Magician's Tower is. Ooh. I think that's still... Like, is that connected? Is that connected to King's Reach? Or is that kind of just a large island off to the side? I think that's King's Reach. I think it should be considered King's Reach from what I understand about how it's written out. Um, it's just... Uh, one of the, the biggest representations that I think we haven't seen yet, and I think that... I, I hope that, rather, that the next maps that come out uh, reflect the Yinto. Yinto? Yinto? Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're essential in, in sort of creating the foundational story arc about how we're dealing with the world because the the ones that aren't the into the, the originally jinto again I don't, yeah. don't know how to pronounce, become the revenant so yeah well what, what, what does their world look like precursor to all the collisions and then the corruption yeah yeah and, and and there's so many more than that too you know i recently went back over that and and i think it was I think it was Gerhardt that had mentioned something about the Gento and the fact that um, the remnant of the Gento that did not get corrupted and turned into the Revenant 
even though they weren't corrupted, they still they still had a morphology. Right. And they still changed. The remnant is something different than the Gento. Okay. And it doesn't say what that change was, but that there was some kind of change that altered them as well. Okay. Which I I didn't think that was I didn't think that was the case. I thought the remnant were just the Gento that did not get um, right. survivors basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and apparently that's not the case. That both of them went un, underwent some kind of transformation, but the the remnant wasn't a bad transformation. All right then. Cool. So, okay. Well. Yeah, we'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Though. But there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of those that are just like weird stuff that happen that you're not going to you're not going to be able to run across this stuff just in the world. Right. Um like I like all the, the story about werewolves, right? Like it was all hype when they when they finally yeah. they really got werewolves. Like it, yeah. Oh my goodness. And so I, I finally went back. One of my conspiracy theory uh, articles mm-hmm. kind of delved into that just a little bit. So you yeah. got the Wosche that we know about that are always fighting the ogres. Um, and then you have the, uh, the Lycan drill that is up in that northern icy part that's not named up, a, up above um, King's okay. Reach. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, what else? I, I am just dying to know what else is up there. And if, and if the Lycan Drill have like a whole society that are living up there, because hypothetically, the Lycan Drill can at will change between werewolf form and, and right. whatever their other form is. And so, it could be several different types of races. All living in one okay. uh, one place, right? Um, and so I'm I I really want to know what in the world is going on up there. <laughs> All right, then. Is yeah. that going to be one of the first places you try to get to uh, when you get a chance? Oh to yeah, this? absolutely. Oh heck yeah, yeah. I've got to know what's up there, and I and, and I would put money on it. I would put money on it that they will have some type of barbarian race. Uh-huh. And that barbarian race will come from up there. Okay, all right. I, that, that's that. If, if I if I were going to put money on it, that's what I would say. There is definitely going to be something like that. And I would even I would even go so far as to say that at some point we may even have a playable uh, lichen drill mm. as well. I okay. I hope that happens too. That um, would be cool. Yeah, especially you know they're they're always talking about uh, how you know your your choices, the choices that you make yeah. in the world are going to really matter. Yeah, if you decide that you know the, and I can't remember what the what the god of the of the Lycan drill was. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, but if uh, if you choose for him to be your deity. And then you get this werewolf form. Um, Would you be let the town? Like, what, how many people are going to know that? Like, what's the, what's the, like, how does it affect you as a player in the world? Yeah, Especially yeah, it, yeah. You, it's you, definitely going to have repercussions to it. Yeah. 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 Um, but Can I think you, it would be fantastic. I mean, that, that would be, that would be so fantastic. I'm sure, you know, that would be much, much, much farther down the road. But I, I really hope that something like that happens at one point. Because if you look at if you look at the lore that's involved with that, the whole deal with the Lycan drill was their deity was just trying to get to basically like this plane of enlightenment. Yeah. Where they had all the knowledge and wisdom of all of Terminus. And so his followers are trying to connect on to, with him on this plane. Yeah. And and so um, can, I mean that's like you finally reach this one level in Keeper and you become a werewolf. 
<laughs> that, would be, that would be such like a funny thing, you know? Oh, oh man, I just dinged my last level as, as a keeper, and then you turn into like a werewolf. And then like, oh wait, what's happened? Wait. I get- yeah, uh, I could I could see that being like uh, um, maybe even unbeknownst to the first player to do it, but yeah, uh, yeah, take, wouldn't that be a great remember, surprise? You know, <laughs> the story that you take, and then you know you're 28, and then all of a sudden you take yeah. 29, and now you're a werewolf, and yeah. you, you're not allowed back. But maybe some <laughs> some innkeepers recognize you. But what happened to your eyes, son? You <laughs> 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 Yeah, you're you're automatically KOS in every city now. Yeah, exactly. You gotta re you gotta re your rep. Yeah. That'd be crazy. That's a good way to do it though, right? I mean That'd be good. Hey, you made the choice. Hey. Yeah, exactly. You gotta know what you're doing. That's basically you gotta know the choices you know you're what? making. I- I think I'm going to work that into one of my stories. Maybe I can scare a bunch of people into not being keepers. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, goodness gracious. Um, do you try to put any other uh, systems into yours at all? Like, I know, like, obviously, I don't know if you can tell, but most of my stories are around our unbeknownst idea of progeny, right? It's what I'm trying to uh, things through and... You know, well, what what do you, what do you have in mind when you try and think in a grandiose scheme? Yeah, so so when I when I do that, there are a couple of aspects of the game that I try to incorporate in there, incorporating uh, climbing. Okay. She incorporated climbing in the in the, her story about her druid. Yeah. And uh, and I that I picked up on that automatically is our multiple generation and there seems to be something that is passed on to that next generation even though the fathers are never around their children <laughs> right like, yeah Ooh. <laughs> so it's kind of like a curse that they have on on their family they they never grow up in good childhoods Oh, um, but I, I do try to incorporate the, there's something, there's some kind of, you know, instinct that they have that's drawn out of them that they don't know about. Um, so I've used that. Oh, and also, um, I don't know if anybody caught that, but in, uh, uh, what was the last one? The, the In the Shadow of the Sun. Um, the, the son, the young guy there, the son, Cater, um, he has a glyph that has been, uh, tattooed into him. Actually, okay. it's a scar. It's been oh. cut. It's carved into him. Oh, goodness. And okay. so he does not get hot or cold. Um, all right. And I'm so, and so yeah. what, I, what I tried to do with there is I tried to relate it back. You know, we know that the, the, um, the high dragon tongue has magical properties. We don't know anything about that. And so I've taken all kinds of creative licenses with that. <laughs> uh, but but I, basically what I did was, so glyphs are just writings in dragon tongue that impose magical properties onto what they're written on. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, that makes sense. That one. Yeah. I mean, they are the lords of the land, even though we don't know where they are for the last however many years. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm brave enough to write about a dragon at, at all. <laughs> so, like, a, I, I can't, I can't, I can't fathom what a dragon would do in my particular story. Like, I can't even <laughs> like I'm. Like three days in in my story too. Like, when am I? Like, it'll take like eighty days to like bring a dragon in. Well, no, no, I, no. I totally, no, I totally think you should have that meeting. You talking about yeah. the faith and family, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. The, I, the only so, one who would have it was the the pilgrim, who's not even introduced. But we don't. But what we don't know is how all. So we know that from reading about um, the. Uh, one of the other gods was nine head God or something like that. 
that was that was kind of like the god of the the dragons or whatever and they yeah. had the, uh, the, the the god that stopped the, down and stopped everyone yeah, like, oh, yeah you, no. have, you have the, the basilisks and um some other kind of serpents or something they were one class that was evil and they were a subclass of the dragons like a cousin to the dragon sure and right. so you have this evil race and then you have the dragon race which apparently isn't kind of good or evil but they're not evil <laughs> well it's it, uh, I mean, when you have over uh, over encompassing power are you really evil when you use your over encompassing power if it if it creates yeah, an yeah. adverse uh, effect on individuals is that evil I don't know. It's it's intention is evil, right? Is that the truth? Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the motivation, which right. is which is really kind of what why I think that in faith and family you could completely tie that in because it doesn't have to be it yeah. doesn't have to be a dragon like we saw in um, in Mary and Castigue's letters, you know, in the story about him going down there with Kazas. Um, it could be a it could be a dragon that you actually have to um it's kind of another step in in his progression as a paladin well i would rather um, see it to be honest with you uh, talking out the story and if i if i were to throw a dragon in there i'd rather give it to the necromancer antagonist in my story i'd rather say that in the deep catacombs that i'm writing uh, the church that they're studying at and where this um, the, the the fun story hasn't even started yet between Coben and the the Night Paladin, where he he learns mm -hmm. how to be a paladin and learns also the law of the lands, which is you know as we were speaking earlier, your your characters are more than the characters, right? It's not just your paladin. Yep. A paladin is a knight and a justice warrior and knows That's the right, laws yeah. of the land and and is there for a particular reason. So as he learns it and has he abandons his original faith with the cleric, who's not gonna like you'll always hear the songs and things like you'll see me write things like that. Like you'll never be away from the cleric faith type deal, right? Even though as you yeah. move forward with it all, I'd like to see uh, the the what, like I said, the main antagonist, the necromancer, in it find the bones of a dragon, and that's what her like. You may have given me an absolute in terms of what her ultimate goal is as a necromancer sent by the Black Rose Keep into that particular dungeon. What are you actually doing there? What are you trying to do? Or you're not raising the Ratkin, you're not raising an undead army. What are you actually trying to do there? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying to raise a dragon from the dead. That's what I'm actually trying to do. Every, <laughs> everything else is subterfuge. That would be, <laughs> that's, 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 that's that would be pretty killer. Right, and that's what, you know, because um, a lot of the soldiers that I have introduced are gonna be dying because they're gonna be going into this dungeon trying to fight their way through getting you know closer and closer and eventually there's going to be i don't know quite yet who um but the way that i'm trying to play faith and family is that there's going to be an adult group and there's going to be a young group there's going to be like an enchanter the paladin the the quartermaster warrior uh, uh hopefully eleanor gets in there i don't know how to write her in there Raleen's in there he's a warrior as well they're going to get themselves involved. I think they're going to be the rescue group. I think that the kids are going to get too far down into the dungeon and get themselves into some fucking trouble. And I think that they're going to find out that this nonsense is going on and the young soldier warriors that are in there too, they're going to get caught up in something that's happening and that this the adults are basically going to come and not play games because they're technically higher level for the area. They're going to come yeah. in and just, you know, wreck house. You're going to see them use higher level versions of the spells and just like literally just have inter inner comment inner, inner comments and banter about how they're moving through the content and how they're just dealing with this bull crap. Basically, like the kids are having a horror fucking show because they're literally going to die from sh that they can't control. But the parents are basically like again. This is the same time that we've been like we've been in this before. Yada 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 is the way I want to sort of write it. Type deal. That is know. so. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if either one of y'all know any anime, but that is so Log Horizon. That's so <laughs> fantastic. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, it, it messaged me uh, that. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. That's that's fantastic. It, 
it, it's it's kind of the same idea as like a sword art online where they're where they're trapped in a video game. Okay. Um, but it it's about this guy who is like a legit like master uh, uh, guild leader raid uh, planner. Like he okay. is like the raid guy. And so he goes in and they're like smashing all the content while all the other people that are trapped in the game are having issues and stuff. And he forms like this little bitty guild that just <laughs> destroys all the content. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's that's so fantastic though. That is I'm, that is gonna be super fun to read. Yeah, it's maybe, be... it's rate will take me three years, so one game <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, right. man, one, one piece at a time. <laughs> yeah, it took it, it took like an entire story for for one of your guys just to go into uh, oh, a house yeah. and like yeah. wipe his butt and take yeah. a shower. Yeah. Yeah. There's only yeah, only, 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 only only three days have passed in in one story, and only one a, a half a day has passed in another story. You know how awful that is when I'm laying awake at night when I can't sleep. I'm like, okay, okay, how do I get him six years ahead? Because I know what happens six years ahead. How do I get him? Yeah. Right? That's, I'm not drinking for any particular reason. So, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> That was so funny. It, that was, I'll tell you what, though, man. That was one. That was one of my favorite stories that I have read on in the fan fiction section so far. Yeah, well, that's that one where he's all like sopping wet. He comes in there. He's throwing his junk all over the place. Yeah, because uh, I want to. I, I don't want to be cold and snowy. And then yeah. hey, you, ju- you just notice the giant bodyguard, the uh, yeah. ogre, yeah. Uh, throwing, right. his, throwing his shoe over yeah. there, and he like totally fails the second try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, oh shit! No, no, no. <laughs> well, I'm alright. You're okay, Marcia. All right. Good. And then you got just an arrogant, you know, wizard who's just sitting down, who obviously watched yeah. all that happen, who doesn't care. Yeah. Dry. Yeah, just... he's sitting there. Yeah, nobody saw that. Good thing nobody saw that. Hey, yeah. way to go. <laughs> way to go, Daniel. Good yeah. job, man. Exactly. Um, no, that it's so it, fantastic. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that, dude. It's it's uh, it's interesting to write all those stories for me um, because it's like yeah. I said earlier. Well, they're not... you get. You get caught up in, in kind of like, oh, okay, I need to tell this main overarching story. And, you know, I need, I want to move it along. I want to move it along. But sometimes you just got to back up and just be like, you know what? I just want to just give them a sense of how this character lives and, and kind of dive a little deeper into who this character is. Because right. that kind of stuff is what really defines, you know, who they are for the reader. Right, and, and it, it lets you, it lets you so like necessary. them. It lets you like them or not. Um, a lot of inspiration yeah. from that comes from uh, Robert Jordan and Wheel of Time. Like he's my main inspiration when I'm writing things and going through. And he spends books talking about particular characters, in, like in mental intuition and how they go through particular events. And uh, what some people would call the slog, which is just three books of political intrigue and inner monologue and individuals oh, trying to wow. discover what they're doing. And it's, it's fantastic if you have the patience to deal with it. But yeah. if you don't, yeah, especially, yeah. especially if you're waiting at the time when they were released, like, you know, 18 to 24 months between books, it's horrible. Like, you don't want to read the next book of political intrigue. Um, which, you know, I feel bad because it takes a long time. To, it really does because you can't just give a chapter on a person without understanding why they're upset to begin with and then also understanding the consequence of them being upset in the scene, right? How are, yeah. how are you bringing this character forward after they've upset everyone around them, after they've been a complete ass or after they've, yeah. like, said a, a rallying story that got everyone on their side, how do you bring that story forward? Because it changes a lot of things, and you have to hook a lot of people in. Um, yeah. And it's... Uh, and, was- and, and sometimes people appreciate that, too. You know, I, I decided, yeah. like, after I had already killed off Corinna in The Fox and the okay. Wolf, the, yeah. the mother, yeah. um, after I killed her off... I spent one of the next stories after she was already dead, like having flashbacks from different characters. 
Yeah, experiencing that. that. Yeah. It fleshed out her character more. Right. You know, to give you more of a sense of who she was and what she was like. It gives you that um, burden to the main character. Why, why, it, why it was important. Right. Why, why is that. it important? Exactly. Who, yeah. why, or what is it that makes this character who he is? You yeah. know, these are things that... that and, what, and what follows them, too. What's the shadow that you don't see as, like, the people yeah. around them as they're moving forward in the realm? What's the weight that this individual is carrying as they move forward? That's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and stuff like you know him, uh, Daniel trudging in, you know, and he's super wet and he's frustrated and everything. I mean that that really kind of solidifies you know for the reader who this guy is and yeah. uh, going and, through and his outlook. Why his outlook is the way it is. Right. Um, one of the things actually Thorndeep and I talked about a while back is uh, as I tried to give the accent to Siv and his way of speaking and uh, as I imagined it is more like a, a, a southern Louisiana bayou type, you know, cut speaking, yeah. you know, aggressive and confident way of way of looking at things like I, I don't I don't need a city boy to tell me left or right. I don't need their help. But I definitely can tell them what's what because they're if they're not in the city, they they don't understand what they're working out and what we're doing as we're walking up this hill. And you know, uh, it was it was actually a whole lot of fun to use a rogue as him as well, being like playing off of the warrior who's unsure set stepped walking up a hill in a place they've never been, and a rogue who doesn't you know pops out. You know, it's like hey, all right, hey, hey. I'm like scary, I did scare you. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like they hold this. Sure, yeah, you can be polite. You can hold this for me. I don't need you to hold it for me. So then you get up the stairs, and you know, oh, I'll take that back. Thank you very much. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> See you later. You know, um, it, 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 it was. It, I try to play that off like an older brother. So so, so much so, yeah. right? Like uh, you, uh, I I don't know if uh, what what environment you may or may not have grown up in, but. Um, shoveling snow and things like that. Uh, you get out into the, you know, the, the especially most recently in the storm we were just in, right? You, you got to shovel the snow. You got to get out. But if uh, where I grew up, it was me and my brother were put out there. Like you got to, you're there. You got to do it. You got to yeah. do what you got to do, type deal. But my brother was an asshole when it came to just trying to like egg me on all the time. He knew I had a short fuse, and he loved to see me blow up all the time. So that's the <laughs> thing that he would do. You know, he's like, you, you go and you know your hands are frozen. So you take over your gloves for a quick second. And you got to go back out. I'm like, where are my gloves? Where are my gloves? Where are my gloves? Who took? <laughs> of course, you're really took my gloves. I'm like, could you just give them back? We got. You got so much more to shovel, please. Right? That's that's the type of mentality that I bring into the story, like the exasperation, the is he gonna beat me up later, the the things like that. That's where that story comes from walking up the hills. What what advantage can this particular individual take towards the other one, but not actually mean it, you know? Where where's the principle yeah. effect happening in that conversation? Um, you know, I thought you were smarter than that type deal. Right, you knew I, you knew I would take it. Why'd you let me take it? Type deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I don't know. So one final question for you guys: What advice would you give to you know people that are interested in writing fan fiction, but you know haven't begun? Hmm. Um. <laughs> uh. But have an interest in it. Hurry up before they post the uh, lower back on the website. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. We've got a thing going. It's open, we might it's be open season. Cool. Yeah, it's open season on Pantheon Lore right now. So, uh... um, I don't know. Uh, it's satisfying. It's it really is. It it doesn't have to do with Pantheon, and it doesn't have to do with anything substantial or long lasting. That's if you good. if you find an opportunity to write something that you enjoy, write it. Um, if it's an opinion on a thing, if it's a subjective perspective on a thing, if it's a creative writing uh, thing that you want to share with people, just just write something. And you don't have to share it with anyone. Just write it. Just write it down. Um, there are places that people want to hear it, want to see it, want to learn. I mean, you heard us talk about it all night uh, before Therakeet even went. We all didn't like what we first wrote. 
Uh, and I'm absolutely embarrassed that Derek may have a first copy of the Bro. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, yes, that I will I will absolutely make sure that is available. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just just you know Nike, man. You know uh, Shia LaBeouf, just do yeah. it, man. Just uh, it, no one's gonna know unless you tell them, right? So do it, uh, and nobody gives a shit if they don't like it. They won't talk about it. If people like it, they might talk about it. If people hate it, it's good too. They'll talk about it, which means you got a second chance because they'll want to see. Everyone loves a good redemption arc, right? So even if you suck at the first one and people see you suck at the first one, maybe that sparks something in you right on them. And maybe not. Maybe it's just something you think about on the toilet for the rest of your life. I don't know. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> just do it, man. Just get out there and break. Uh, one of the other things that I would say too. Um, is it, if you if you feel like you want to, you know, kind of put your toe in the water without getting wrapped up in something? Um, I thought the introductions. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let me just throw out an idea in the introduction section on Terminus Tavern, mm. and that way I'm not, you know, I'm not having to write some huge thing, but here's a conceptual idea of, of this character right. that's intriguing to me. I'll throw it out there, and then all of a sudden, you know, kind of those creative juices get rolling, and, and uh, it definitely... So, did you ever play Dungeons & Dragons? I haven't, personally, and I tried to uh, a while back, but fell asleep on the group. <laughs> But um, do, uh, did you ever yeah, get? Yeah, I, I I tried I tried in seventh grade, and okay. it was like the most boring thing I've ever done. Okay. And then and then I tried again about a year ago, and it was a little bit more fun. But I couldn't get over the concept that I'm sitting around the table with a bunch of. Yeah. grown yeah. adults <laughs> like talking make believe stuff I mean, <laughs> at one point it was it was like oh this is kind of interesting and then at one point i was like i don't feel comfortable telling any other person that i'm doing this but i have a buddy of mine who uh who he gets together with a, uh, a group of his guys all the time and they're like constantly playing and they don't just play D and D they play a lot of other kind of tabletop RP games. Um, but, I'm just, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I had a really hard time overcoming the, I feel like I'm trying to be an eight year old mm. and I'm mm. not as good as it, as I was when I was eight. Yeah. No, there's a whole lot but of other. If I yeah. if I write it if I if I write it instead of say it out loud for some reason it that's more adultish. Well, you don't, you don't have to share it. That's the whole thing. It's the sharing yeah, of it. We still do. It. Well, no, I, no, I totally yeah, I totally do have to share it though. I did. Well, no, it's it's. it's no, no, let me rephrase that. We share it after the fact. It's not sharing during. Yeah. Sharing yeah, the story during during yeah. makes you feel like you know. You know it's, what? It's, it's a lightsabers with a stick type idea. Like it's it's cute that, when that, you're that eight years true. old, but at thirty two <laughs> years old, thirty five years old, when you're you know slapping sticks with someone else up there, it's like what are those guys doing? Are they waiting for the bus? <laughs> what else is going on? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I guess it is a little bit different when you're when you're writing these stories and you know you're not sharing that thought process with the world as you're going oh ooh, oh maybe i'm yeah. turning the corner like <laughs> you don't need to know how i'm making the sausage yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. we are we already know that a lot we already know that a lot of your ideas come when you're sitting on the toilet you know <laughs> nobody else needs to have that camera in there with you seeing how you come up with this stuff um you don't just need to see me swearing at, at the at the traffic well, I come up with my great character. <laughs> like you, you right there, Pennsylvania. You're now an enemy of mine, right? 
Well, one thing uh, I can say, you know, Dungeons and Dragons definitely can be a very personal thing, and finding the right group is vitally important because everyone has their own way to play it and approach it. And you know, if you don't find the right group, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a terrible experience. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, I hadn't played it. I hadn't played it in like forever, and so my first, the first day, I I had already rolled my character during the week, and so my character was already ready to go when I got there, and everybody else had had been playing their characters for, I guess, about a month then, um, and so I was kind of new. So that first day, it actually was kind of fun because within the first probably forty five minutes of us playing. I had already like somehow finagled like 400 gold from the group <laughs> and, and trying to work something out because they were trying to buy a house. And I was like, well, let me liaison with these guys over here. And, and, uh, I'd wound up telling them that, you know, well, Hey, I, they, they said, I, I told them I could get a real good deal. You know, I'm a rogue. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna be real charismatic. I'll get a really good deal in the house. And then I wound up telling them a price that was a little higher than the actual price of the house was. And so everyone, everyone, that's the weirdest part. Everyone gets to hear that part, though, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I do know how. I have enough experience now that I know how to play a rogue, okay. for sure. But <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Uh, well, I have to admit, that was a lot of fun. All right. Hey. Well opportunity at that i have i've never well, well if there was reasonable hours at the terminus tavern <laughs> right. i might consider myself a participant. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I'm, I'm, i am working on that so you know but the, the uh plans for that uh are are, are going to be down the road but Fair I, enough. Do, I do have plans for that so we'll see if we can get that going next year all right um, wow but I, I really want to thank um, all of you for coming on to the show. This has been absolutely fantastic. I've been looking forward to this all year, and it's just been great. Uh, Hell yeah! Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've been looking for. I've I've been looking forward to this for ever since you mentioned it. I was like, oh man, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So thank you again. Thank you so, everyone yeah. who uh, came in tonight to join the show. Uh, Bounty Code, thanks for and Sparrow, thank you for the follows. Appreciate it. Uh, this is the last Terminus Tavern of the year, and um, uh, thanks, uh, Bendini. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, we'll start up in the new year. Uh, everyone have a great holiday and a very happy new year. All right. Absolutely. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for having us, Thorne. You bet. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. Good night. Peace.